Hello. Today we'll talk about uh, the regulation of um, eukaryotic uh, gene uh, expression. So basically we'll talk on um, two um, uh, topics uh, the ex to explain and differentiate between the various mechanisms of gene regulation as well and dis describe the regulation of gene expression and uh, get a, a, an understanding of the cis and the trans acting molecules and as well modification of the uh, DNA. So for the transcriptional control of gene expression, basically the concentration of any protein is controlled by the contribution of four processes. As you can see from the pie chart, that mo the, the major uh, percentage of these process processing is uh, processes is the transcription, which have around 73% of the total uh, of the different processes occurring in the cell. Uh, then we have the messenger RNA degradation and the protein degradation and the messenger RNA translation. Looking over uh, into the overview of eukaryotic gene control, so in bacteria, the gene control allow bacteria to adjust to changes in its environment to optimize its growth and division. So it, it, the bacteria will have very fast um, like um, regulation of their genes because bacteria is always subjected to a lot of environmental changes around um, the bacteria. While in multicellular organisms, environmental changes as well can induce changes in the gene expression. For example, the response to a low oxygen concentration, which is the hypoxia, that uh, may result from an environmental change. So in these cases, a specific set of genes is rapidly induced to help cells to survive under hypoxic uh, conditions. Uh, this set of genes, for example, can give rise to angiogenic proteins that stimulate more the growth of new capillaries into the surrounding tissue, so supplying more blood to the uh, tissues. The generation of the many different cell types of a multicellular organism actually depend on three uh, parameters. The right genes being activated in the right cell at the right time during the developmental uh, period. In most cases, once a developmental step has been taken by the cell, so the cell decided to go into a de developmental fate, it is not reversed. So it's different from the reversible activation and the repression of the bacterial genes in response to environmental condition. Because as you know, it is the simplest um, um, organism of the bacteria. It needs to have a flexibility in the activation and the repression of the genes in order to cope with the changes in the environment around this, around the, these, uh, the, uh, the bacteria, because it's a very simple um, organism. So despite the differences in gene control in bacteria and eukaryotes, there are two key features of transcription control also applied to eukaryotic cells. First, there are cis regulatory elements. What are cis regulatory elements? Actually, it's the a protein binding DNA sequences. So the cis regulatory elements is actually a DNA sequences that require, require a protein to bind to it. Or it can be called transcription control regions. Are, are, and, and these regions are usually associated with genes. The second uh, feature is there are specific proteins that can bind to this control region and determine where transcription will start and, and to either activate or repress the transcription. So these specific proteins are collectively called trans, trans regulatory elements. So we have two important expressions here, cis regulatory elements, which is basically DNA sequences that require the binding of protein to it. And, and there are, there are trans regulatory elements and actually these are the specific protein that binds to the cis regulatory elements. So eukaryotic cells benefit from the chromatin structure to regulate the transcription a mechanism of transcription control that is not available to bacteria, which is obviously and looks logic because bacteria need to respond fast to the changes to the, in the environment, which is not the case uh, of the eukaryotic cell 
because in eukaryotic cells, chromatin is condensed, and once there is an order to express a certain set, a certain set of genes, this chromatin need, need first to be uncondensed in order to expose, to expose the DNA for the process of transcription. This process, as I said, is, it is lacking in the bacteria to enable the bacteria to do fast regulation of the expression, uh, activation, and repression in order to respond fastly to the changes in the environment. Otherwise, the bacteria will die. So in multicellular eukaryotes, many inactive genes are assembled into condensed chromatin which inhibits the binding of RNA polymerase and general transcription factors. So we have two sets actually of protein. There are activator proteins. The first set, activator protein, that bind to the transcription and control region, which are actually the cis regulatory elements, near the transcription star site of a gene. Then it promotes chromatin decondensation, so that opening uh, uh, leading to the opening and the exposing of the DNA sequence, then this will eventually lead to the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter, and then <coughs> transcription starts and there is a transcription elongation. While the other set of proteins is the repressor protein, actually they do the opposite effect uh, from the activator protein. So they bind to alternative control elements this causes chromatin condensation, so they close up the uh, DNA sequence, so they don't expose the DNA sequence for transcription. So this will inhibit the binding of the RNA polymerase uh, and as well inhibit transcription. So as you can see here, this actually a uh, region of the DNA in which the gene is switched off. So you can see how the chromatin is condensed and in this region, there is a set of inactive genes that are assembled into regions of condensed chromatin that inhibit this uh, architecture will inhibit the RNA polymerase and their associated transcription factor from interacting with the promoter and hence starting transcription. Once there are some pioneer uh, transcription factors, some pioneer transcription factors, let's have a pointer, some pioneer transcription factor, which actually it's, it's a trans element. This pioneer transcription factor can interact with the chromatin, with, the, with another set of uh, uh, proteins, which is called chromatin remodeling enzymes and the histone acetylases. And actually it's obvious from its name. So it's, it, 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 it do acetylation for the histones. This, uh, the, the binding of these uh, three complexes, the, uh, the pioneer transcription factors with the chromatin remodeling enzymes and histone uh, acetylase will decondense the chromatin, making it accessible to the RNA polymerase and hence the, and the, the general transcription factor and hence the transcription start. And as you can see from the figure, the condensed chromatin is transformed into open chromatin. And you can see here that the, uh, uh, the histone tails are acetylated that facilitate the decondensation of the chromatin, opening up the sequence and exposing the sequence of the DNA for RNA polymerase to sit over the uh, cis uh, to sit over the DNA sequence and start transcription. Of course, the process can be reversed by the action of the repressor's protein, another set of proteins, which is repressor, once the function of that gene is no, needed, is no longer needed by the cell. So it needs to be, uh, the chromatin needs to be closed co to conserve the power of the cell of um, transcription of a genes that is no longer needed. So what about the, where this uh, uh, um, trans element sits on the cis elements? So measurements of the transcription rates of a multiple genes in different cell types have shown that when, they, when scientists try to measure the, how the transcription rate of multiple genes uh, um, in different cell types, they found that the regulation of transcription is either at the initiation step or during the elongation. And you remember that if you remember the transcription, transcription even in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, it's composed actually of uh, three, three steps. Initiation, 
elongation and termination. So actually the regulation occur only at the initiation step or during elongation in the proximal proximal region, a promoter proximal region. So that's mean the region near to the promoter. So the transcription from a particular promoter is controlled by the nearbinding protein, which actually the trans elements. However, eukaryotic transcriptional regulatory protein can function either to activate or to repress transcription, depending on their association with other protein. So in other words, a protein can bind to a partner and sits on the DNA to activate transcription. And the same protein can bind with another partner and sits on the DNA to repress transcription. So the DNA control element SIDS elements in eukaryotic genome to which transcription factors, trans, trans elements, binds are often located much further from the promoter they regulate. They can be located either upstream or downstream from the promoter. So it, it is not necessarily to be inside the gene. As a result of this, arrangement, transcription of a single gene may be regulated by the binding of multiple different transcription factors to alternative control elements. This will direct expression of the same gene in different types of tissue and at different times of uh, during uh, uh, development. So let's have an example how, the, how this regulation occurs. In this example, we'll see the regulation of the expression of one of the genes of the mammalian gene for the transcription factor BAC6. So BAC6 actually is a protein which is required for the development of the eye, the development of fusions of the brain, and development and spinal cord, and as well development of cells in the pancreas to secrete insulin. So this example illustrates that, uh, as you know, this, this gene exists in all our body cells, but it is differently expressed in different parts of the, uh, in different kinds of cells. You can see it has a function in the eye, it has a function in the brain, it has a function in the spinal cord, pancreas as well. So we are talking here about the mode of regulation. Although it is only, it, it is the same gene in these different cells, but it is regulated differently. differently. And there is a different isoform that is expressed in different types of cells. So generally the gene, you can see, it consists of how many um, uh, exons? You can see it consists of around 15 exons. So you have exons 1 to, till 13, and you have, you have exon uh, alpha, and you have exon 0. Okay, uh, and you can see uh, the size of that genes, uh, you can see uh, the size of that genes from this scale. So actually, these are the uh, uh, diagram illustrating the, um, egg, where is exons and where is entrons. So exons are the red boxes, whatever it's small or big, and the entrons are actually the spacing regions between these exons. So BAX6 gene, as we said, it is expressed in, in, in and have three different functions based on the, the cell type. BAX gene actually expressed from at least, at least, that means there are more, three alternative promoters. So we have three different promoters that generate three different isoform of that genes, of that messenger RNA. And they are functioning in different cell type at a different type, at, at a different time during uh, embryogenesis. So you can see here, it have a transcript A, transcript B, and transcript C. If you look closely to the transcript, that's mean the messenger RNA or pre-messenger RNA. So you can, if you, actually it is the pre-messenger RNA because you, you can see it's still the entrance is here. It's not um, have been processed yet. So you can see here, for, the, long, the longest one is transcript A because it occupies almost all of the, um, it have almost all of the exons, while the shortest transcript is, um, is um, uh, trans transcript C, because it has exons starting from five till 13 exons plus the alpha. So that means the transcript C lakes all these exons from zero uh, to four exons. So by some mechanism, the cell, the type of the cell, understand which isoform need to be expressed in that cells. So in case of the eye, for example, it will express, the, although it's the same gene in these three different cells, 
But by some mechanism, it will understand that for the cells in the, that lead to the development of the eye, it need, the cell need, these cells need to express the isoform, which is transcript A. While, for example, for the pancreas, the cells of the pancreas need to, to express the isoform, which is transcript C. So that's the mode of regulation. So we'll talk in the next few slides how the cell can do this job of uh, uh, understanding how the uh, correct isoform will be expressed in the correct cell. So let's see an example how they can detect where this isoform can be localized inside the embryos. So again, here is uh, uh, the DNA sequence you can see. So to understand how they can do this uh, sort of experiment and they localize where, where actually the gene is expressed, they use a reporter genes, reporter sequence. So what's a reporter sequence actually? A reporter, that means it reports, it reports location. Because actually the protein, once it is expressed, you can't detect it uh, uh, in vivo, uh, uh, unless you extract the protein. So in this um, uh, experiment, they can detect by the, uh, by the reporter sequence that have been included upstream of the gene of Pax6, they can detect where this uh, gene was expressed. So what is the reporter? Actually, a reporter, it is is a DNA sequence for beta galactosidase. So this DNA sequence, this DNA sequence of beta galactosidase is fused to the DNA upstream of back six. That's mean before exon zero. So you can see exon zero and it was inserted this sequence upstream of back six. So they took, they do this uh, um, uh, experiment in a single cells of the inner mass of the embryo and the uh, and the, the um, um, uh, leave the cell to undergo embryogenesis that will result into a transgenic mice why it's a transgenic mice because we introduced we modified in the gene in, in, in even in one gene uh, by introducing a reporter sequence uh, for a beta galactosidase protein so any uh, uh, organism that have been modified in its DNA sequence can be called a transgenic. So they, they leave this embryo going to embryogenesis and then we'll see how the embryo will look like. So why, why beta galactosidase and why they choose the DNA sequence of beta galactosidase? Actually, beta galactosidase, it's a reported gene. And this gene, once it uh, start to, to transcribe, tr uh, uh, there is a transcription for these genes, it will generate a blue insoluble receptate. So actually it will generate a, a blue protein, blue protein, colored protein, when incubated, when XGAL, which is a, a lactose uh, analog, is incubated with uh, this protein, it will convert to blue color. So that's why it report, it report by a visual uh, a color that can be visualized by our eye. So, so how the experiment, how the animal looks like? When they've done this experiment, they found that the color blue or the beta galaxies or the reporter DNA sequence that have been fused upstream of the back six, that means it will report the location of the protein back six that have been transcribed and translated. So you can see here, the back, back beta galactosidase was observed in the developing lens in the cornea and the pancreas of the embryo. So that's mean, actually, here the blue color reflect the location of the protein that have been expressed, which is back six, six, because this gene will be transcribed starting from the reporter till the end uh, of the gene. So once we see the reporter after translation, once they see the reporter protein, which is beta galactosidase, we can understand that uh, back six protein is existing uh, because it's suffused with this uh, beta galactosidase protein. So here, this experiment actually told us where this gene back six is expressed, lens, cornea, pancreas of the embryo. 
looking in, into the sequence, they understood that why the three there are three different isoforms, as, I said, as we said in the previous slide. So they, they found that the human PAX control region, actually the region which you control expression in human DNA, are actually between the upstream of gene RCN1 and gene EL, uh, and, the, and the promoter of the downstream gene ALP4 gene. So you can see here, the, this actually the region of the gene of BAC6. It is flanked by two genes, one gene RCN, RCN1, which is upstream, and ELP4, which is downstream. So that's actually the localization on our DNA, on the, our DNA sequence. And you can see these are the transcription control region, which have another name, cis elements, okay? It's actually DNA sequences. So you can see that, are, keeping in mind, the arrows here indicating the uh, direction of transcription. And actually, if the, you can see that the direction of transcription of RS, RCN1 and LB4 is opposite to the direction of expression of BAC6. So you can see as well that they identified that there are three different promoters for uh, the BAC6. What's the meaning of three different promoters? That explains why BAC6 can generate at least, and they said at least, three different forms. Because up till now, they discovered only three promoters. And once there is a promoter, they will be, they, they, there will be a version of the messenger RNA of the gene. So as you said, we have a transcript A, transcript B, transcript C. And you can see they are the, th the three are different in size. So that's why they identified three different promoters for BAC6, and that's explain why there are three different transcript at least for BAC6. So you can see as well, they found that there are sequences, other scattered all over the DNA in the region of the BAC6 genes that's all upstream of the BAC gene, because you can see the BAC gene starts from here, and this is exon zero. And these sequences actually, they found that it is partially conserved in most vertebrate. So that's mean it's not, it's, it looks similar between different uh, vertebrates. So the transcription control region for many genes are found, usually found hundreds of kilobases away from the coding exons of the genes. As you can see here, there are some sequences that is away from the gene. One method to identify short, such distant, distant away control regions, away cis elements, is to compare the sequence of distantly, distantly related organisms. So they compare the sequence and see if these sequences are conserved or not. For example, <coughs> there is a human non-coding, non-protein coding DNA sequences, sequence around 500 kilobase downstream of the SAL1 genes. This sequence encodes a transcription repressor which is required for the normal development of the limbs. And they found that this sequence of DNA is highly conserved between human, mice, chicken, frog, and fish. Again, this SAL1 gene, uh, they found a DNA sequence which is non-protein coding 500 kilobase downstream of the SAL1 gene, and its main function that it can code a transcription repressor that is crucial and important for the normal development of the limbs. Okay, and they found it's highly conserved between humans and these animals. So when they done sequence similarity over chromosome 16 between fish, frog, chicken, and mouse, they confirmed that is a similarity illustrated by the beak, they confirmed that they have this region that is almost similar. You can understand from the figure that this other region, there is no similarity between mouse, chicken, frog, and fish. So you can see that this, this sequence we are talking about is highly, is a, a lot similar in these different animals. So this conservation of DNA sequence in a region of human genome about 500 kilobase downstream from cell gene is conserved, they found actually it is conserved from zebra fish to human. So 
let's see here. This is a figure shows how they inject uh, uh, the gene of interest inside the uh, by micro injection inside the ovum or the zygote or the um, uh, the, the embryological cells, the inner mass cells. So these, um, they tried to do the experiment to check that. So when a transgenic mice were produced, actually introducing a gene into um, the, uh, embryonic cells of a mice, containing the conserved human DNA sequence of SAL1, and of course it will be fused with beta galactosidase, which is the reported gene that once expressed will give rise um, upon incubation with uh, lactose uh, analog. Exgal, it will give rise to a blue color. So that will indicate the location of the product of the cell one gene, which is a protein. So once they um, uh, introduce our, uh, uh, these genes, this gene, cell one gene fused to beta galactosidase, um, uh, and uh, uh, check the embryo after that to see where it is expressed, this cell one gene, they found that the transgenic embryos expressed a very high level of beta axodase, which, is, which reflects the location of SAL1 gene in the developing limb above. So that means there is a relation between SAL1 gene and the, the uh, formation of uh, limbs in, the ma in, in mice. So human patients with deletion in this region of the genome develop with limb abnormalities. Because as we said, the sequence is, 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 the sequence is conserved. So basically they done the experiment on the mice and uh, they found that this gene actually, which, with the same sequence, because it's a conserved in human, it gave the same result actually and any deletion in this region of genome will develop limb abnormalities. These results indicate that this conserved region direct the, because it's a, it, it was, um, near the SAL1 gene, this uh, uh, conserved region directed the transcription of SAL1 gene in developing limb. Because the sequence and function of transcription control region are often conserved through evolution, this um, trans element, uh, this, uh, trans element actually, the transcription factor that bind to this uh, transcription control region, this is elements, to regulate gene expression in a specific cell types are presumably conserved as well during evolution as well. This has made it possible to assay control region, this is elements, in human DNA by using reporter gene expression like the uh, beta glass in transgenic mice, uh, sorry, in mice or zebrafish because it's a conserved a procedure that is far simpler and faster and less expensive than uh, preparing in transgenic mice. So initially they done it on uh, uh, transgenic mice, but since it, everything is conserved at these regions, so they can basically do it is, um, on zebra fishes. And this as well benefit human because they can do it on human, okay? And it's, as we said, it's a simpler, faster and less expensive. So let's talk about the regulatory uh, sequences in protein coding genes and the protein through which they function. The expression of eukaryotic protein coding gene is actually regulated by multiple protein binding sequences, DNA sequences, which is the transcription control region, cis elements. These regions include promoters and other located near transcription star site or far from the genes they regulate. So we have a set of elements which is called the promoter proximal animal that help in regulating eukaryotic genes. So the recombinant DNA technology or techniques have been used systematically to mutate the nucleotide sequence of various eukaryotic genes in order to identify where is the transcription control regions, where are the transcription cis elements. So they've done a systematically mutation to a certain sequence of the nucleotide sequence, trying to see what is the sequence that affect the transcription of that genes? So they use something called scanning metagenesis that can pinpoint the sequences within a regulatory region that function to control the gene, expression of a certain set of gene. In this approach, a set of constructs with overlapping mutation are assayed for their effect on expression of reported genes. So in other words, they make different ISOs, um, different um, uh, models that have uh, different uh, regions, mutated regions of the same DNA sequence, uh, link it to a reporter gene and see if there is expression or not. 
again. So they do report a gene, have a series of mutation, and see series of mutation in different regions of the gene, and see which mutation will result in stopping or in, in activating or repressing the gene of interest. In this way, by mutating the region, Obviously, if you mutate a region and there is no expression, so that's mean this region of DNA sequence probably it's his element that can control the expression of the gene. If the mutate a region and there is still there is expression, that's mean this gene is not related at all to the expression to the regulation of the expression of the gene. This type of analysis identified some of the promoter proximal elements of one of the major genes that um, is a thymidine kinase, kinase TK gene from a virus, a herpes simplex virus type 1, HSV1. So let's see here how they uh, have done this experiment. So you can see here, this is the wild type or the normal the normal region, uh, the normal DNA sequence of the TK uh, DNA. And this actually, uh, you can see this is a gene, the gene. And you can see this, the origin knew that the, re, the, the gene for TK, TK starts from here. So probably the control element or control or disease element probably located upstream of the gene, okay? So the main question here to understand where is speci specifically in this region, the DNA sequence that control the expression of that gene. So as we said, they, they generated different constructs of um, um, mutated construct and they uh, then um, fused with a reporter gene to see. So I can see the normal wild type or the unmutated form, uh, for example, give, uh, is actively transcribed, represented by three uh, plus uh, signs. So that's normally. So they done first mutation in that region so they mutated this region of the DNA sequence. They found that the transcription uh, um, uh, efficiency have not changed from the wild, wild type. So that's mean this region once mutated or, or um, got neutralized, it will not affect the transcription. So that's mean it's not uh, regulating the transcription. But when they mutated only this, this region, this region, they found they found that the transcription uh, rate have been lowered into into a third. Although there is a transcription, but it, the, the, there is a somewhat um, decreasing in the efficiency uh, in the constant in the amount of trans uh, of uh, messenger RNA that is transcribed. And this gives first clue that this region of uh, the control region may control the expression of that uh, gene TK gene. Again, they proved by another construct that only this region, because they emitted all this region, that only this region, which is involved, partially involved in the control of the gene. Another, another mutant, they done another, in another region, only this region mutated this region, and they found that it is not affected the transcription. While when they mutated this region, they found another region that could mutate, could down-regulate the expression of the gene, represented by only one plus sign. For the second region, for the subsequent region, no effect. Subsequent region mutation, no effect. For this region, it was very crucial, this region, because it is actually the only region which shut off the expression of that gene, represented by no messenger RNA have been formed. So they realize that actually there are three control elements that control the expression of the gene, of the TK gene. And they realized that finally that demonstrated that the DNA region upstream of HSV1 TK gene contain three different upstream uh, uh, transcription control sequences. Actually, it, it, a TAT a box, and the, the, the name it T, a, T, a, T box, BE1 and BE2. And they, these, they conclude that these are the control element that need to be co 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 uh, cooperative, um, functioning cooperatively to regulate the expression of the TK gene. And as you, ca you can see, this is why it's called the scanning mutagenesis. So actually, it, they scan the, the region of the DNA by doing diff the serial mutate mutated forms and see the expression uh, of the gene aiming to identify the specific uh, uh, DNA sequence that control uh, the expression of the gene. 
They found as well that there are distant sequences of DNA, which they call it, the scientists call the enhancers, that often stimulate transcription by RNA polymerase too. The transcription as well can be stimulated by control element lo located either south of the base bears away from the transcription store size. Such long distance transcription control elements are called enhancers. Each enhancer is a binding site for a sequence-specific DNA binding transcription factor, trans elements. Enhancers either can occur upstream from a pr promoter or downstream from a, pr for, from a promoter, or within an intern or even downstream from the final exon of the gene. So you can see back again to the example of BAC6. Okay, so as, um, as you can see, now we will try to explain why this gene have been differently expressed in different uh, cell type. Because if you remember from the previous slide, BAC6 can give rise to three different, at least three different isoform of messenger RNA from the same gene. So they found that many enhancers are cell type specific. So for example, they found that an enhancer controlling BAC6 expression in the retina, in the eye, is in the entron region, entron region represented by one, between exon four and five, exon four, box four, and box five. And they found as well, there is another enhancer, another DNA sequence, the gray box, which uh, control the back six expression as well, in the pancreatic cells, different type of cell, is, loca is located upstream of exon zero, and this exon zero. So this may give a clue that this enhancer number one lead to uh, the formation of the, uh, this short isoform of messenger RNA in the retina, while this enhancer, which is upstream, exon zero, may activate gene in the uh, pancreatic cells to form the back six gene to form the longest form of the isoform. So it's another mode of regulation of expression to dictate to, to dictate which uh, isoform of a specific gene is transcribed in a specific cell. So most eukaryotic genes are regulated by actually multiple transcription control elements. So it's only not, not only one transcription control element, but could be multiple. So you can see here as example, that these are just example. So you can see here a mammalian gene could be controlled. This actually the blue boxes are the exons, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, uh, this color is the entron and the yellow Actually, it is a TAT box, which is a control element. And you can see there is some promoter, pro proximal uh, control elements, the uh, brown uh, boxes, uh, DNA sequences. And you can see there is uh, these uh, uh, green boxes, which can be located upstream, far away, downstream, or even the green boxes located inside the entron region, and all of them are enhancers. So many mammalian genes are controlled by multiple enhancer regions. So you can see there is multiple enhancer region at different locations. As well, there are many, most of the mammalian genes, actually 70% of mammalian genes, which actually the housekeeping genes, are expressed from what's you, what, what, what is called CBG island promoters. So what is CBG island promoters? Actually, scientists have found that upstream of some genes, mostly 70% of million genes, there is a repetitive sequence of CG, 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 CG. Um, so they called it CBG islands promoters. And they found that these CBG island they um, uh, are transcribed, uh, uh, control transcription of gene much lower uh, levels than genes with data box promoters. So we can classify mammalian genes now as being controlled by two different sets of promoters. Either promoter is a CBG island, which is around 70% of a mammalian gene, or either by the control elements or the uh, enhancers um, uh, found in the other 30% uh, of genes. So these multiple alternative transcription sites are used to generate messenger RNA with alternative five ends from, for the first exon drive from each star site. So to explain more of that, there are multi multiple alternative five dash in. 
If you remember the three isoform of back six, you can see that they have from the five end, they turn to be longer, longer three different isoform. That's why there are three different alternative uh, isoform actually differ at the five uh, prime end. So keep in mind that transcription can occur in both direction, but keep in mind as well that transcription have to move in the five prime, three prime direction. In SVC yeast, genes are more closely spaced, more closely spaced with few or no entrant at all. And you can see the enhancer is, uh, uh, the, the enhancer is a li little bit closer. It's around, um, it's uh, like um, not more than 200 uh, bases, uh, base bears, but in, uh, in uh, mammalian, you can see it can go, the enhancer, the green box, can go up to uh, 50 uh, kb upstream of the gene. So enhancers, enhancers, up, or in yeast is called upstream activating sequences, uh, lie about 200 base pair upstream of the promoter, which is nearer and closely packed, to, to closely uh, located to the gene, uh, which is different in the mammalian genes. So this, uh, the DNA binding transcription factors, trans elements, often exist in alternative heterodimeric combination of polymers. In these uh, few slides, we'll, uh, we'll understand how the same trans element can bind to a different partner and can uh, regulate the expression. So for example, let's, let's have three different uh, monomers of transcription factor, A, B, and C. Each one of them have an activation domain and have a DNA binding domain. You can see a DNA binding domain, that means this part of protein will bind to DNA and the activation domain will lead to the activation of transcription. So when these three different uh, monomers, you can see the different combi combination they can make for uh, dimerization, either uh, factor A together, factor B together, factor C together, and, or you can combine each monomer with a different monomer. And each of them, this will create six different combination, alternative combination of activation domain that can all bind at the same site. So it basically can bind on the same site. So let's see here what's happening. So for example, when a transcription factor monomer to recognize different DNA sequence, so you can see here, that the six, uh, the three monomers with the different combination they can make they can identify different DNA sequences and they can have a unique pair for each sequence of the DNA, okay? And so this uh, expands the layer of identification. So initially we have three monomers of transcription factor that a bond combination give six different, uh, six different uh, dimers that can bind to uh, Six different, um, uh, six different nucleotide sequence on the DNA. So what happened next? So you can see here, once the same ABC, if there is an inhibitory factor, another protein um, uh, is formed or even introduced to the cell, and, the, and, and this inhibitory factor have the ability to bind to one of the uh, uh, active, uh, to one of the transcription factor, okay? So you can see, for example, it, it, in this example, this inhibitive factor can bind to factor A. So once it bound to factor A, you can see, it will shut down the transcription of the gene in the site four, site five, and site one, okay? But site two and site three and site six, it keep on transcription. So here you can see, how they are switching on and switching off of some genes depending on the availability of the transcription factor or the trans element related to this uh, cis element, okay? So as an example, so different transcription fac uh, re responses can occur depending on which transcription factor monomer are expressed in the cell and how their activities are regulated. So the resulting these alternative or combinatorial, combinatorial uh, possibilities of these heterodimeric transcription factors increase the number of potential 
DNA sequence that a family of transcription factor can bind. As we said, as, as we said in the last slide, that in other words, you have three transcription factors, but you have the ability to bind to six different DNA sites due to the uh, possibility of heterodimeric uh, transcription factor heterodimeric transcription factor formation. So the three, again, the three different transcription factor monomer could theoretically combine to find, to form six different homo or heterodimeric transcription factor. Going further, so if, you, if there are four different monomers, could form a total of 10 binary factors. So it can bind to 10 different uh, DNA sites or DNA sequence or genes or, or, or control elements of a gene. You, if you have five monomers, you will have 16, 16 possible uh, dimeric factors and so forth. In addition, the inhibitory factors are known to bind to some of the transcription factors monomer. Thereby, they can block their binding to DNA, as we saw in the last figure. When these inhibitory factor inhibitory factors are expressed, they repress transcriptional activator by the factors with which they interact. This complexity or alternative or combinatorial complexity expand both the number of DNA sites from which these factors can activate transcription and the ways in which they can be regulated. So you can see here an example for how genes are repressed, okay? So you can see here, this is an example of a repressor directed deacetylation of histone in terminal uh, tails. So basically you have a DNA binding sequence, cis element, which is called DNA binding sequence. So you have a protein which is called UME, UME6. This protein actually that's a, the factor we have talking about, the factor A, B, and C. It have a DNA binding domain and it have either a repressive domain or activated domain. So you can see here this DNA binding do domain of this UME6 binds, actually these are the trans element bind to the cis element, which is URS1 gene. So actually this gene is the control element which control the transcription of a nearby genes. So once this DNA binding domain binds to the URS1, the up, upstream control element, URSA1, this will lead to the repression domain, you can see the RD domain, bind to SYN3. And actually SYN3 is a subunit of a huge multi-protein complex called uh, RPD3L. This huge uh, 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 complex, actually it's a histone deacetylase. Once a histone deacetylase, it will remove the acetyl, signal, uh, the acetyl signal on the histone tail. Removing the acetyl signal on histone tail will lead to uh, condensation of the uh, chromatin, uh, and that's mean a closure, closure up of uh, the uh, uh, chromatin, and so the gene will not uh, be accessible. As, as we said again, this deacetylation of histone and terminal there inhibit the binding of the general transcription factor at the theta box, so uh, these uh, will repress the gene because the, uh, the chromatin is condensed. If, of, um, if we look to the opposite mechanism of repressor, actually it is the activation. So you can see here, it is in another example, there are UAC, upstream activator, activator uh, activating sequence, once bind, bound to the DNA binding domain, DBD, of the uh, GCN4, which have an activation domain, this lead to the, act the activation domain can bind to a huge complex, which is called the SAGA complex. This SAGA complex have a sub uh, a subunit, which is a GCN5. Uh, this CNC uh, sub, uh, G, uh, CN5 have a hyper uh, uh, histone acetylation. Uh, this uh, huge complex with this subunit have a histone acetylation, uh, acetylation uh, um, characteristic or uh, function that will acet acetyl, will do acetylation to the histone tail. The process of acetylation of the histone tail will open up and the hyperacetylation, as you can see from the mark, will open up chromatin, facilitating the expose of the DNA or the gene for the, gen for the RNA polymerase and the general transcription factor to sit on the DNA or the gene nearby of this region to be transcribed, okay? 
So here you can see a sketch of the uh, RNA polymerase sitting on the promoter region, especially with the, in, on the TATA box. And you can see that it can be regulated based on the control element or the cis element once bound to the trans element on the uh, different region. So in this case, this assembly will enhance the transcription. But in other cases, if this, if this are another assembly for another DNA sequence, this will shut off the transcription of this gene. But in other cases, if this assembly occur between the trans element and the cis element, this will uh, uh, um, uh, um, promote a transcription. So you have three modes of regulation, either um, enhancing of hyperactivation, either um, a switch on, either a switch off the uh, transcription of the gene. Even there is a complex, another assembly that will may lead to silencing at all the gene. So that means this, this is actually a down regulation of the gene, not a completely uh, shutting of the gene. But here is a complete silence of the gene. So you can see here, you can see for only one gene, there are different modes of regulation, okay? So that's explained as well why the same gene can be expressed or not expressed or down regulated or hyperactivated in the different uh, types of cells. In the last part of the lecture, we'll talk another important mechanism of regulation of transcription, which actually a very important mechanism that differs from the previous mechanisms of uh, regulation of transcription. And it's very crucial, uh, crucial and it's emerging nowadays for understanding there is another layer of uh, transcription that doesn't involve the gene itself, okay? Doesn't it involve any inherited changes in the, uh, uh, actually any uh, changes in the DNA sequence, the either mutation or something like this will affect the uh, transcription. So actually it is the epigenetics or the epigenetic regulation of transcription. So what's epigenetics? Actually the epigenetics is the study uh, the, uh, in, uh, the study of the inherited changes in the phenotype, for example, the uh, isoform of protein produced from a gene, uh, because it is still a phenotype. Phenotype it's only it's not only the uh, the the shape that you uh, can visualize by your eyes, but the expression of a, G, a protein from a gene. This protein represents the phenotype of the gene. So epigenetics, it is a study of inherited changes in the phenotype of the cell that do not result from changes in DNA sequences. That's another layer of uh, transcription, of uh, regulation of transcription. So for example, the differentiation of bone marrow stem cells into several different types of blood cells actually depend on the epigenetics. So such, as we, as we will see in the next slide, such epigenetic changes are due to the expression of a specific master transcription factor that, that are regulator of this cellular differentiation. So these master transcription factors control the expression of other genes that encode transcription factors and the protein involved in a network, complex, very complex network of gene control. Okay. So you can see here, this DNA, once it got the mark of, for example, the methylation of DNA, once there is no, you can see the mark um, added to the DNA, which is the methylation of DNA, will affect the complexity of the chromatin, either relieve uh, the chromatin or condense the chromatin once the mark is uh, increased. So you can see in, in this um, animation, the methylation of a DNA lead to the condensation of the chromatin, while removing the signal will lead to opening, opening, opening up the chromatin, exposing the DNA sequence for transcription. So actually, this epigenetic mark affected the transcription of gene irrelevant of the DNA sequence or any mutation in the DNA sequence. So this, this is the example. So you can see here, this is a multipotent uh, hematopoietic stem cell, and it can do self-renewal to keep a steady ball of these cells in our body. And they can divide initially to, to give two different, uh, two actually same different cells. So you can call it same or different because they have the same genetic genome and everything. But one of them, we can call it common myeloid 
progenitor cells and the other common lymphoid, actually the common lymphoid from which the, uh, the lymphocyte arise. So both have, both of these uh, two cells have the same uh, complement of DNA sequence, same sequence of DNA uh, sequence of the original zygote, but they have restricted developmental potential because they have epigenetic differences. Until we explain that, um, let's say they have different epigenetic difference between them, this will lead this will lead to different uh, the different immune cells that we have. Okay. So actually, and you can see here the factors that affect the differentiation of each set, each different type to give give rise to each different type of the immune cells. So basically, this different uh, lineage of cells due to the difference in the epigenetic difference between them, or in other words, the marking of the DNA, the epigenetic uh, differences, as we'll see now. So let's talk about, so what is actually the epigenetic uh, changes? So the changes in the gene expression or the transcription initiated by these, uh, the transcription factor are maintained actually over multiple cellular division. So over multiple, not only after one single division. And it, it occurs, these epigenetic changes actually can be summarized into two major categories, either opposed to translational modification of stones, and we already have uh, discussed the post-translation of modif modification of histones in previous lectures, and as well methylation of DNA at the position five of the cytosine. So only cytosine C is a, it can be able to be uh, methylated. So these two uh, processes can be called epigenetic marks. And these changes are always maintained and propagated to daughter cells when cells divide. So the major responsible, uh, we'll talk now about uh, which is responsible for doing these mars. So DNA methylation actually repressed transcription. And they found that, scientists found that most promoter, which is around 70%, as we said before, that's the CBG island, fall in this uh, category. And they found that the active CBG islands, a lot of Cs here, promoters have their Cs, in the CG sequence that are unmethylated. So that means the chromatin is open, so there, is a, there, there are transcription. While the unmethylated, uh, these unmethylated CBG islands have reduced the affinity for histone octomers. So the DNA sequence that have CBG island unmethylated, they have reduced affinity to the histone. So they don't bind to the histone firmly. So the the chromatin is loosed, so the genes are exposed, so they can be transcribed. These nucleosomes immediately, the nucleosomes immediately near or neighboring the unmethylated protein are either dry or trimethylated at histone 3 lysine 4, HCK4, and are, can be associated with polymerase 2 because the sequence is exposed. And there are, so this enables the chromatin remodeling complexes and TF trans transcription factor 2D. As you remember, this is the first transcription factor that sits over the uh, DNA, uh, the promoter region. This will initiate polymerase 2 pre initiation complex assembly and associate with the nucleosome that have this signal, H3K4 trimethyl signal, to promote the transcription by polymerase 2. In differentiated cells, Cells that have CBG island marked with methyl, or that's mean methylated, trigger chromatin condensation. That's the opposite actually, because it's methylated. So transcription is repressed because the affinity between the DNA sequence that is marked by methyl will be higher to bind to the uh, uh, octomer of histones. So that's why that's, that this will lead to closure of the, or the condensing of the chromatin. So proteins that bind to 5-methyl C-modified CBG islands are associated with stone DS delays and repress chromatin remodeling complex, leading to condensing of chromatin, resulting in transcription repression. And this methyl mark is the methyl mark, so how the methyl mark is added to the DNA. The methyl mark actually is added by a set of enzymes which is called DNA methyl transferases, either DNA, DNMT3A or DNMT3B, DNA methyl, DNA methyl transferases. So we have these two classes. Actually, the 3A and 3B, actually they are de novo DNA methyl transferases. Why? Because they methylate an unmethylated C.
Once they have methylated DNA sequence, the methylation at the C is passed on through DNA replication through the action of another uh, enzyme, which is DNA MT1. Consequently, the promoter remains repressed in all subsequent uh, daughter cells. As you can see from the figure, here you can see originally the cell have a methylated uh, cytosine. You can see that it have a methylated cytosine in a region that is a CBG island represented by CG. Once there are DNA replication, you will have actually the parent uh, uh, strands and you have a daughter strand that actually lack the, methyl the methylation signal. So here comes the action of DNA MT1, which adds the methyl signal for the unmethylated one to match the daughter cells with the original parent cells. So that's why DNA MT1 actually uh, differs from 3A and 3B. The mechanism of this epigenetic repression, that's mean adding a methyl signal to the DNA and, the and the stopping transcription without affecting the DNA sequence, is being, it's very intensely uh, investigated because they found that tumor suppressor gene encoding protein that function to suppress the development of cancer are often inactivated in cancer by abnormal CBG island methylation of their promoter gene. So basically, in other words, Normally, we have a tumor suppressor gene to help us to fight cancer cells. So they found that in these cancer cells, there is a mechanism the cancer cells try to methylate the promoter region of the tumor suppressor gene to switch it off. So in future, it will be easier to activate the, uh, this tumor suppressor gene by removing the methyl uh, signal from the promoter region of that gene. And, and, and that's why it's very heavily studied in the last uh, uh, 10 years. And this will give rise to a new generation of drugs, uh, of medication, which is called epigenetic therapy, which is working only on the signal that affect the DNA like methylation. You can see here one of the famous examples of the um, consequence of uh, epigenetic uh, uh, alteration through generation. So initially, a woman who smokes while pregnant, scientists found that can induce an epigenetic changes in her uh, uh, baby inside her womb or uterus, and these epigenetic changes can be traced down into three uh, generations at once. In herself, her unborn daughter, you can see the blue, represented by blue, herself, because the red, this uh, baby have grown up and got pregnant as well, even if she is not smoking, but the epigenetic have been transmitted to her baby and to the third generation and her daughter reproductive cells. So they traced these epigenetic genetic changes, which is started by smoking on in the, uh, uh, during the first generation. To sum up, and to sum up for gene expression and regulation, and the take home message here, you need to understand that gene, it's a gene regulation. It's not stop, it's not switch off and switch on. The gene is not working or not working. It's, it's a gene regulation. It's not, you don't have a minimum expression and you don't have a maximum expression of gene, but it's a matter like, it's a volume control. So the genes they can understand how, how much the gene need to be expressed and in what concentration the messenger only needed to provide the enough protein for, for a certain type of cell. So you can see the same gene can be expressed minimum at certain type of cell, but it can express the maximum at certain type of cell, and it can express the moderate at different type of cells. So it's not like a mode of switching off a gene or switching on a gene. It's like a custom volume control, okay? And that's the take home message. Thank you for listening, and this is the reference for uh, our lecture today. Uh, Lodish, 2016, Molecular Cell Biology, and these are the pages for this lecture. Thank you, and I'm waiting for your uh, questions.